Hello, in this video we're going to discuss multinomial logistic regression. And the quick development is this. We're going to let y be a categorical variable. So it takes on the values 1 through j. So we, although we assign numerical values to it, it really could be, you know, small, big, or blue, red, orange, green, you know, these are categories, not ordered, just categorical variables. And it would be a discrete random variable, and let's let x be the covariates that may influence the outcome of this variable. Now, for each observation, or each person, sometimes I like to think about it like that, it can only take on one of these. And so it gets to pick one. And so really for each observation, we create J um, indicator variables. And it's a and these are all one or zero depending upon what category was picked. Oh, there comes my cat. <laughs> um, she loves being in these videos. So all right, back up. And so um, the sum of these variables is 1. So, right, because only one of them is 1 and the rest are 0. So they sum to 1. <laughs> now she wants to grab the pointer. So expect a paw coming in. The, uh, then we can let y, this vector, yi, be a, it's a multinomial with n equal 1 because it's one vector, one observation. And each of the categories has a certain probability called p1 through pj. And the i is there because we're talking about individual i or observation i. And we have to write it like this because each person or each observation has a vector of covariates that may influence the outcome. All right? So all these probabilities for each category have to add to one. And the and we can think about it as the probability oh my gosh my other hand is actively keeping the cat out so the probability of yij equal one is the probability of that category now the density for a multinomial remember n equals one is this so it's the observ the probability of that category raised to yi and um and that's it. And so since it's a product, we can write it like this. So in the development of multinomial logistic regression, sometimes called polytomous instead of dichotomous polytomous, so mean, meaning more than two outcomes, um, we want to pick a reference category. And, and there's, you know, half dozen or more ways for this development to take place. But I'm presenting perhaps the most common, and I think most uh, statistical softwares do it this way, but you can force them to do it other ways too. But what we do is we pick a category, um, and then we compare. So we pick one of these categories as the reference category, then we compare all the other categories against that reference category. and. And notationally, it's just easiest to pick the last category as the reference category. And so then, we th these are the equations. So the log of, of, of the jth category divided by the reference category, capital J, is a linear, has a linear relationship, okay? So in logistic regression, there were only two outcomes. So outcome one, versus the other outcome is what we modeled as a linear relationship. But here we're doing it, each category, each of the, the J minus one categories compared against J. So, and when we do it like this, we can actually, so once we model this, and actually that you can do that is you can treat each of these J minus one uh, categories like logistic regression run logistic regression on each of these J minus one outcomes, and you come up with a beta estimate, those J minus one beta estimates. Um, but that's perhaps not the, the best way. We, you know, I like to model it as one, 
you know, all together. So, but when we set it up this way, we can compare any two categories. So let's, let's compare the ELTH category and the KATH category, right? The log of this. But we can multiply it by one, right? PI capital J, PI capital J, which is our reference category. And then this is, can be thought of as the log, the log of each, you know, minus the log of this. But, and, but this is what we're modeling, right? So that becomes, you know, that's a linear relationship and this is a linear relationship. Of course, we can subtract out the yij. So modeling it like this, we can technically compare any two categories against each other with this relationship. So once we know the betas. Um, so we can also, instead of comparing against the reference or comparing each, we can also estimate the probability of each category um, like this. And so this is a, a few steps to derive. So we can estimate each category probability, PIJ, like this. So the log of PIJ, and that's what we're interested in, divided by the reference probability, is this linear relationship. Right? Now, we can take, uh, we can exponentiate both sides and then multiply up the reference category probability, like this. And then, so this we're going to call star because this is it. This is the probability of I, this is how we estimate it. But we got, we have to derive an estimate for this. So this we, we have the covariate and the betas, which we will, you know, estimate using maximum likelihood. So now we need to come up with an estimate of this. So if on both sides we sum over all j, right, j from 1 to j minus 1. And so that's what we do here. And so there's no little j in this, so it's a constant and comes out. But this piece is 1 minus pi capital J, right? That's by definition of the multinomial distribution. Well, here, if, you know, if we add that to this side, factor out a pi capital J, and then divide by what's left, then we come up with the solution for PIJ, and then we can plug it back into here. So the next step, we do that. So we come up with our estimate for PI capital J, which is this, and we plug it back into star, and we get this. So that's our estimate for each category probability. Now, how are we going to estimate these beta parameters? Well, let's use maximum likelihood estimate estimation for the BJs, the beta Js, I mean. So this was the density for one person, multinomial. And so with the sample size of N, since all these are independent, it's just the product of each of those. So this is it. So this is our joint probability mass function. So let's take the log of it to find the log likelihood and the log of a product is the sum of the logs but then since that's raised to a power we can multiply it out front now here so this sum is here but for this sum the last j we're going to make it separate so this is, is the same but and this is the jth term and the reason we do that is because this is over parameterized, you know, that with the condition that the PIs, Js have to sum to one, what we do is we take that last one and then write it in terms of the first J minus one variables. And then that's what we can uh, maximize. So this piece here, YI capital J, can be thought of as one minus the sum of the previous j minus 1 term. Now I leave this the same for now. Okay, So then we multiply this into here and then we multiply this into here. And then here we have a sum from 1 to j minus 1. So we can combine those and then this one we have to keep separately. So that's what we do. So this j, the sum is here. There's a y common in both so that's what this is. 
and then the, this PJ uh, minus this PJ, okay? And then this product times one comes down, but I write the PI capital J as one minus the sum of the first J minus one terms. Here I didn't because this log of the difference is the um, actually the division. So this right here can be thought of as this. And then um, we write it like this because the PIJ divided by the reference category is what we're assuming to be a linear uh, a line. Right, so this comes down to here. Now over here, um, the one minus and then the sum of the PIJs, which is what we just derived right here. Right, each one is estimated by this. So this is actually a sum. Well, this is not would not be uh, indexed by that sum, so it could come out, and we just have the sum of this, and that's what this is. Right. So this was a constant in regards to this sum, and so we just left with this. Now this we can plug in what we're estimating by this linear relationship, and here if we um, get this common denominator and then sub do the subtraction we get one over one plus this so then what we do is we take that up take it times minus one and bring it out front so this piece becomes this piece and that's it so now we have equations in our our knowns which are the y's and the x's and then we want to derive estimates for these uh, betas. So what we do is we start taking partial derivatives and we find equations and then we can plug it into some sort of numerical uh, optimization program. And we're going to skip that step and I'm going to say that this can be done in SAS and R. So in SAS, Proc Logistic just does this right away. In R, for some reason, you have to have a special package to do multinomial logistic regression. Um, so maybe in another video we derive this from scratch I don't know yet um, but it's just so much easier to use these but now you kind of know what's going on behind the scenes when you use these packages well that's all I have for today hopefully you enjoyed that I sure did please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye